Hey everyone, welcome back to the Creekside. I'm Tony, and if you've been around here enough, you know we love to mill lumber here. You have to forgive me a little bit. I had oral surgery this morning and had a tooth. They broke it in two and then they removed it and then stitched up my jaw, so I've still got some freezing in there and all that sort of thing. Aches a little bit. Nothing worse than a toothache. I wanted to show you something on this lumber. We're milling a 16-foot spruce log. These logs have been cut probably three, four months, maybe a little longer than that. A lot of guys talk about how they get a little bit of a kind of a sweep going in their wood. And I want to show you something about this log here. When I started this log, I put a brand new sharp blade on. So my blade is sharp. Everything on the mill is level. Everything is the way it should be. However, I'm still getting, if you can see it, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm still getting a few little dips here and there. The reason for that, if you look at each place, you'll see it's where there's knots. And I have learned something about these bandsaw mills, that no matter how sharp a blade is, you get your tension just perfect. You can have everything working and tweaked just perfect. But sometimes, no matter what you do, you're still gonna get a little bit of, you know, a little bit of this going on in that piece of lumber, simply because you have a lot of knots. They're really, really dry and they're really, really hard. And so that blade sometimes will take a mind of its own and want to ride up a little bit on that knot even though that blade is sharp your rpms are set where the, you know where they should be your motors working correctly your bunks level your blade is level everything is right your tracking is right sometimes it just is going to happen so don't sweat it if you have a log that you know, you can't seem to get a little bit of sweep out of it. And if you've checked everything and your blade is sharp, your tension's right, your bunk's level, everything is rolling uh, evenly, the full length of, your, of the milling uh, process, then just chalk it up to you've got a log that's got a lot of knots that are really hard, and it happens. It's not lumber that you'll probably sell for grade A lumber, but it still makes good lumber. And worst case scenario, use it yourself. But don't sweat the small stuff like that. Now, if every piece of lumber you're milling is sweeping and bends and bows and all that and, and the hills and the valleys, then, then you need to start looking at your setup. But I'm just talking about when you do have everything right on your setup and you still get a few of those, don't worry about it. It's going to happen. It's just the nature of the beast. Something else I want to show you over here. Here in the motor... Um, we've got your gas shut off, your fuel shut off right here. Now, there's an on Woodland Mills online forum that I'm a part of, and I've been reading a lot lately how people are saying they're snapping this red fuel throttle button off. My mill has, let me see, 229 hours on it. And I can honestly say, not one time has this pull cord ever come back and hit that fuel shutoff switch. Never. The only way that this is getting broken off that I can see is if when you pull that pull cord out and you let go of it from here, even from here, that's going to come back, and yes, it'll impact that fuel shut off and break it. You're pulling that out. Bring your hand all the way back in with it. Then let it go. If you do it that way, you will never, ever have to worry about breaking that off. The only way that that's getting broke off is people are letting go of this pull cord when their hand's still out here. If you don't do that, then you won't break that off. Now, I suppose when you're pulling, if you're not careful, you can get your finger behind that fuel shut off and maybe, but even that, you're going to have to really work hard to try to do it that way. So, 
make sure when you start, make sure you don't put your pull cord behind your fuel shut off, but make sure when you pull that out that you bring it all the way back in again with your hand on it. Control that recoil on your pull cord. If you do that, it won't slap back and it won't break off your fuel shut off button. I'm not telling you that you don't know how to run your machine. And I know perhaps somebody out there is going, well, listen, I've started motors my whole life and never, I get that. But this is not one of those motors. This has a motor with a pull cord right by your fuel shut off. So you have to go a little slower and you have to bring it back in with your hand. Do that, you won't break it off. That's what I do anyway, and it's always worked for me. 229 hours, been milling, lots of lumber. I start this every day, two and three times. Never once broke it off. All because I bring my hand back in with it. Hope that helps somebody. I'm gonna get back to milling. Have a great day. Thanks for always watching our videos. And thanks for sharing them. If you don't mind and you have a, a way to do it, would you just hit that share button for our videos now and share them out on your channel or on your um, social media site so that it helps our channel grow? If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It's free and it helps our channel. Leave a nice comment. And again, I'm not a pro. You may not agree with everything I say, and that's fine. We all have our opinions, but let's be good to each other. On that note, we'll talk to you soon right back here at the mill.
16 foot, four inches thick, 10 inches wide. Has to go down there in that pile. I already took the first one down. Now here's the second one. Okay, here we go.